Johnny Fontana, Real World INFJ, back with another video. Um, it's just going to be a conversation, right? No real entry. Um, my thing is that um, I've decided that I'm, I'm going to leave MBTI. Now, I want to have a conversation with you, though. Because I, I really, I really want to sort of come to terms and understand and figure out, you know what I'm saying? Like what's all happening? Like just put everything into perspective. Like I watch like Dave Superpowers, you, you may not know him, but even he like watches a lot of um, Gary Vaynerchuk and Jordan Peterson. And I guess he gets a lot of his information or he developed a lot of, you know, his concepts or formulated some of his theories through watching and observing other people and so forth, even during, you know, I guess his business, whatever. But it's like, I get it. I get how MBTI can be a place where you come in and you figure yourself out and you, and you but I've reached a point now where it's like, okay, I came in, I wasn't sure what was going on. I mean, of course I took the test. Again, it's like, I have my true personality, but I have other personalities as well. Like that's what a lot of people like don't realize. It's like, I have so many different personalities that, but I'm in control of all of them. Right, because the people people latch onto these personalities I've created, which of course are, are ancillary to my real personality. Right, but they don't they don't necessarily want to give me credit that I'm a sort of controller of the forces at play. So if I say something dumb, people assume that I'm dumb. It's hard for them to assume that I'm saying something dumb on purpose because I want a reaction. Right, you see what I'm saying to you? Like online, I'll come across very like tough and like very like and have a lot of bravado and like ah. Uh, but for example, last night I went out and like, I was alone. Like I was like, even though they invited me, but I was all the way over here and they were like, Hey, what are you doing over there? Like, I'm just hanging out and like observing and just being alone. Like I'm not like, ah, you know what I'm saying? Um, sort of getting drained because I'm at the club or whatever. I mean, I'm okay, but I'm like, can't wait to go home because I just don't want to be here. But it's like, this whole MBTI thing has come to the point where it's like, okay, you find out who you are. And now it's just become of like a melting pot on forums, on YouTube of just constantly reiterating who we are. So it's like you go online and has anyone ever did that? Okay, fine, I've done that. Has anyone done, okay, I relate to that. So it's like you're just constantly in a place where you're just finding and self-reflecting, but it doesn't go beyond that. It's like, so for example, like now, how do you put that to use? How do you, you know what I'm saying? Like there's no other space that I found where INFJs, because again, I have a problem where it's like, okay, you read the book. This is who you are. Um, you have these abilities like Eric Gary, I just, you know, refer to him again. But I just want to remind everybody that I didn't make a video to the world about anything about business until I was 35 years old. After I worked every single day from the time I was 22 and in reality 14. And then I started talking. There's a whole lot of talking going on. How about more action? How about more execution? How about more paying prices for what your mouth is saying? That is what I hope you do. The reason I do a daily vlog on YouTube is don't listen to what I'm saying, watch what I'm doing. I'm stunned by how many people would rather read a book than watch the behavior of the people that are winning. His thing is watching people's attention. He knows where the market is gonna go based on people's attention, like that's his gift. He has this ability. So now you look at him and you praise him, you acknowledge, you're like, okay, when it comes to platform, social media, you're gonna to go to him because he's gonna give that to you. When you go, f when you want to find out about scientific, you know, research, you go to the science people. When you want to go about engineer, you go to the engineers. When you want to go about sports, you go to the sports analysts. 
so for for me it's like I'm an INFJ it's like okay like when you want to know how to figure people out and, and how to sort of get people to sort of you know rise up or how to penetrate you know and how to bring them down diffuse the situation you come to someone like me because I've been in these situations I've dealt with a whole lot of people but it's just that I can't find it online and I know we've discussed that but I just feel like it's just a point where now I'm becoming too like it's changing my personality like it's like I go online and I'm so frustrated and instead of now being part of that team of like just being reactive like someone asks a question okay I'm gonna answer this question because I feel this way so therefore we can connect like instead of taking that approach I'm like oh what's going on why are we doing this you know like why is this all like questions and, and everyone's just being reactive in terms of or instead of being proactive, you know, and, and projecting forward and like actually discussing different theories. Like, for example, like I have to go to to pickup forums, you know, sleazy pickup forums because they discuss, OK, when you talk to this individual, when you remember, I was giving you the video. Mm -hmm. The person was discussing social intelligence, you know, like he was saying that. And I'll even give a clip here. We spend our lives on the internet. So we're no longer really interacting with people in the real world. You go home, you chat on Facebook. Probably most of your friends, you chat with them more on Facebook than in person. Or on WhatsApp more than in person. Relationships now, guys would rather, they like the relationship where they text more so than in person. I have friends like that. They're, they'd rather be further away and they rather, they keep going for girls where it's like long distance just so they can get the high off the text back and forth. And what happens there's these weird, awkward interactions now where you're acting in the real world as if you're online. And it's super weird and it communicates such low value and it just kills a lot of opportunities. I showed you know, footage of say me interacting with all these people and I'm like, here's the difference. And more and more guys couldn't see the difference. They would need a logical explanation, but they couldn't feel the difference. Now, this is not necessarily your fault, it's just the direction we're going in, and this is the cool thing about going out and socializing with people. How more and more people are online, and it's causing this awkward, you know... Uh, social interaction. Social interaction. Once you're face-to-face. -face. Yeah. But see, that's one subject line online discussed in depth. So I think, like I always well, told you, you know, like, with onlines and all these segregation communities, gotta be careful because people go in with expectations, oh, these are my people. But because of the how it's structured and because people um, usually and more and more that are behind internet are not socially intelligent people. Some of them are, but the numbers don't match up. So when you are, you entering socially intelligent, and by socially intelligent, we mean just like being able to read people, not just from what they say on paper, for how, what words they use, how they look, body language, how every time you, how, how you always say, the moment I have people entering the room, I feel them. I know from how fast they walk, how they talk, intonations of the voice. I can tell stuff. I can smell stuff. I can smell something's coming. I can smell somebody's like, and that's social intelligence. There's more and more people are, are out there, especially online, that have no clue. They not even, they don't even understand jokes anymore. There's another one too. This was in, a, it was a Jeff, he was with a, a client. And he was like standing on this uh, on the on this stair thing, and he was talking to this girl who's like really really tall, and uh, she was joking because he's small, but he's standing on it, and she obviously knows he's standing on it. She's joking, oh man, you're really tall. And he's like, yeah, and like jokes around with it. The guy who's with Jeff, he's like, no 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 no, listen, let me let me interrupt everyone, let me interrupt. Um, he's actually not tall. Look, there's a step, so you see he looks tall because he's standing on the step. <laughs> That just kills. It sucks the vibe out. There's no, there's not that social intelligence. And this is something that you have to learn, okay? You know, so when you entering that space, seeking something, you thinking you're on, around your own people, just to find out it's one big disappointment because not necessarily that 
they not INFJs, they're just not but emotionally uh, yeah, intelligent no, INFJs. Thing, because emotionally I, intelligent INFJs don't go there. That's my whole point. They come in, they look around, and they're like, it stinks, I'm out. Like, this is waste of time. At least this is how I approach it. I know I'm a different personality. Yeah, but I but get I, it, but I, I just don't... See, my thing is, okay, but and I get that. But then my thing is this, so for example, Gary Vaynerchuk. His big thing, and I know I refer to him a lot, but his big thing now, like I said before, is finding out and figuring out why more and more people are not actually pulling the trigger and actually, you know, getting involved. You know, so they say they want to do business, they want to be entrepreneurs, but more and more are not doing what they need to do. And he does a lot of research on that, on, on that because that's just his thing. Like I said before, his one of his things is to um, find, um, to, what do you call it again, curb the way that Asians parent their children. You know, um, I don't know how he's gonna do it, but that's one of his things though. So he's always, like that's his interest, like he's always trying to figure out why people are doing what they do. And so for me, when I come into these forums and I'm like, yeah, like I see it. Like the way he sees that so many people are not doing it, like more people are paying for these conferences and but they're not actually doing anything with it. So I'm like, is there a correlation to, to that to when I go online? And I'm like, hey, why aren't more people stepping up and actually fighting? For the fact that INFJ shouldn't be in the situation that you shouldn't have this defeatist attitude, that you shouldn't be, um, you know, feeling a certain way because you know, you know that happened to you last year or this, and then you know you. Just... Yeah, it's 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 more um, con. Uh, what's the word? Um, counteractive culture is not entering the scene. Basically, that's what you're saying. Yeah. So. But no. But here's the thing. But here's the thing. So when I come in, and the thing is. My thing is not to come down on them because I've taken yeah, that yeah, approach, yeah, yeah. and it's like uh, it's not like oh man, like I, I can't deal with it. Like even Jordan Peterson, he says, oh MBTI needs to go to the waste to the waste bin. Like I don't think that. I, I think it's it's awesome. I think once you get involved in, in it, there's it's a tool. I think it has such an immense you know ability to really help people figure things out and figure others. But what has happened to me though, is that I've, because of I'm into this research, 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 I'm going down these rabbit holes and the more rabbit holes I'm learning from all these people and I'm applying them and I'm like, okay, now this is why. So I'm actually learning, learning, learning. And then when I come, I'm no, like, why aren't more it, INFJs learning? Oh, hold on. So why aren't more INFJs learning? So then when I come online and I ask this, instead of now people actually answering and really connecting with me, it's like, oh, well, because we're not, you know, as socially intelligent as you. We don't have your skills. It's like as if, I know, but you know what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Like, and, and so now it's like, so now I, I step back and I'm like, okay, what is it? Why am I the black sheep for? Like, why do I feel so different for? Like, why is it that, like, like, because I'm, and here's the thing, like, I would argue that I don't, I'm not a, I'm a, I'm an asymmetrical thinker to begin with. I don't look at the world the same. Also, you know, some sort of gypsy root in there, but we have an intuitive quality, and so I don't, I don't, I think, I mean, if there's any message in our family, it's like, you know, you guys kind of don't belong. Why are you so weird? You know what I mean? I mean, it's worked in this business to a point, but even that it's hurt more so, like, why don't you kind of get along? Even when you kind of join the rock and roll, you know, the rock star club, it's like, why don't you just kind of get along? Like, why are you going to shut your mouth? Like, why you got to say stuff? You know, I kind of get that vibe sometimes, even from other rock stars. It's like, I don't want to be in a fucking club. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Why am I obsessed over this for? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy. The fact that I'm actually, I was like, babe, I need to have a conversation with you because I want you to be given perspective because I feel like I'm being too consumed by this MBTI thing. I spent too much time on it. I spent too much time on trying to figure out why other INFJs are not, you know, more socially adept 
rather than just worrying about myself, like it bothers me that I'm, I'm taking myself to that point. It bothers me that I'm actually making a video. It bothers me that I've made five, six, seven videos that I've spent 10 hours rendering that I haven't put out yet. Just because I'm, I, I, I don't want to offend certain people. But at the same time, I couldn't come across as very like, ah. You see what I'm saying to you? Like, I mean, like, I'm in my mind where I feel like I'm going crazy, and that's why I think I need to step away from this. But before I step away, I just need perspective. Is it is it one of those things, like, remember we have discussed before that INFJs get involved in something, especially helping somebody out, you know, because there's a need, part of personality, need to make things better. It's just there. It's established fact. It's not you the only one. There's always this need. Some of them don't know how to go about that need. They use hashtag and they think that's getting things done because there's a hashtag, hey, I, I voice my opinion. But they are the ones that like, when the push comes to shove, results shall be shown. That's how we're gonna make it happen. Like these people in military, they need to pass their physicals. You go and you train them and you teach them how to eat and how you already sh have a record to show, yes, okay, I have helped them. They have passed. They still in the military, they come and got kicked out. I changed their lives. I did this things changed okay okay this is one of those animals that you met the crowd that can't be helped it's technically look at this crowd yeah, but I don't want to no, hold on. Like I, I know I know but sometimes this is my personality talking cut your losses because I think there are NFJs like you out there they are just not there yeah, and then on YouTube well, I understand. So maybe you are the one pushing the culture right down the stream, and that's why you feel the way you feel. Because usually leaders are really lonely people, because they see visions beyond, uh, like what's his name, um, Billy Corgan says, you know. And I think it's pretty kind of true because we we heard other people uh, use the same analogies or percentages from how they feel. My guess is it's very similar to the way I view the world in a spiritual term. 80% of the world is asleep. They do not process reality beyond what's on the fucking television. They don't, and they don't want to. They really don't want to. How many times have you sat at a table with somebody and you brought up kind of a more sophisticated argument? Somebody in your family leans back and goes, I don't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. That's just like, or what am I going to do? What am I going to do about the people over there killing each other? It's not my fucking problem. Pure apathy. I don't think it's pure apathy. It's just like, it's a lack of empowerment. So if you live in your little bubble dream, well, and John Lennon spoke very eloquently about these types of things long before I did. The other 20% is constantly up against this idiot that goes, I don't fucking care what's on TV tonight. Mm -hmm. So that's the difficulty. And that will always be the difficulty. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a great question, but it's a, it's a question that in a way can't be answered because everybody has their own opinion. One guy's rebel is my poser. 80% is sheep. 80% people just, not that they're not smart. It's not that they don't have nothing to offer. Yes, they do. They just don't get involved. And there's 20% that actually makes the sacrifices for the sake of the 80. And the 80 is just not being appreciative of what's going on. They're always uh, ready to, to pick up the goodies but they're not ready to like, you know, put money where their mouth is. So my point is, imagine you going out training this guy, he wants help, he asks you for help, you show up. I didn't even ask me, they, uh, they didn't ask me. Uh, I actually it, went out it, and I spent, exactly. it's to the point where I'm taking time away from you. Exactly my the point. family. So my sacrifice come to in place, thank you. <laughs> so, but my whole point is, see, I see certain level of satisfaction in that because I'm like, you know what? My husband sees it, he does it, he delivers. That, that's contribution to society. And I cannot be selfish at that point as well. So my point is, but we have seen results. So what my point is, but now imagine you go out there, you helping somebody and they just like, well, John, you didn't show me this exercise, right? That's why I didn't pass because you didn't show me. You know what I mean? So I think you are dealing with these kind of people online. You're not dealing with people like John, 
swear to God, I need to nail this exercise. What do I need to do? Because I tried and tried and tried and I'm not getting there. And you come in like, we're gonna do a different approach. We're gonna take da 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 da. And I think online, you don't get those people like, huh, but why would you say that? Where did you come up with that? Oh, you submitted a link? Well, let me read up on those links he submitted. Like, let me, before I answer to him, let me, you don't get that. You get right away answers like, well, who made you, you know, who made you? Like it's- When we first would go to New York or Los Angeles or London, we would get treated a certain way and it was really confusing to us because we grew up very working class. So we would go to like a place like New York and it's like, you guys are too into this. And be like, like, like we would get castigated for, for working like too hard, caring, you know, and uh, you know, Metallica had that too. This sort of like, like an ambition that was almost like what some people would kind of scoff at. Sure. And I'm thinking I like, know. I hear exactly what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You guys care too much, and I'm thinking, get the f out of my way. You know what I mean? Like, do you know what I'm coming from? Do you know what I want to escape from? And most of the people who criticize people like us for being who we are or what we are or what we represent had better backgrounds than we have sorry in those spaces it's a pity party bunch of losers gathered together regardless i'm i'm saying it the way i'm saying it from my personality type he sees it differently and that's all good what i'm saying is not to throw them in the bucket but sometimes they have to hear, but listen, you cannot even throw everything away. You have to remember some of the tough questions you have asked online, there could be plenty of people that haven't answered, but doing background research because they are NFJs. So most likely they would be doing it. Remember, a lot of people online are just like me. I go read and then I do my own thing. I don't engage. I am one of those politically conservative people, I will whatever, but I will not buy your product because you said that. So if that's your opinion, well, guess what? I'm not buying, I'm not shopping there. You will never find out in the world that I exist. But what you do, I see. So you have to understand that plenty of people that actually see you, you just don't know. So the people that frustrate you are the engagement kind, and the only engagement you getting is freaking behind closed doors, hiding type of bravery. Because technically, to be fully yeah, but see, brave, is, but you have I don't to engage. Wanna, see, but that's the thing. For me, I, I don't want to come across like I'm, I'm the special one, because that's not what I'm. No, I'm we, to, um, we're no, not no, even no, say, no, we're no, not no. saying that. But again, but. I know because this conversation is going that way. That's my opinion, though. No, I know, but the thing is, but I'm trying to steer it so that it's not coming from that point of view. Where I just want to get perspective, not so much from me, of why I'm this and they're not like that, but understanding of the the whole bigger picture, like the dynamic of why is it like this? Why are people like I find myself going online looking at different people, looking at. Like, for example, like, I get a response from someone else, right? And even though it doesn't bother me, it doesn't hurt me, but I want to know, <laughs> where is that person coming from? Why is that person, you know, instead of actually trying to connect, especially when I say, hey, I want to know, why aren't more, more INFJs who are online more socially adept? Why aren't we caring about the fact that you have individuals who come online and, and are happy to say, like, happy to say, oh, yeah, my parents just bought a refrigerator and I didn't even notice. Like, it's cool to, like, speak in those terms. Yeah, like, why, why would you... That support group, that forum, whatever it is, is about health. It's about fitness. What happens in these groups is one person says, well, you know, I messed up my diet. I did this, 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 and this. And they laugh about it. And they'll say stuff like, you know what? Oh, well, it is what it is, whatever. Well, what happens is another person jumps in and says, oh, well, that's okay. Because, you know, last week I did this. I ate a whole chocolate cake and I binged for three days and I vomited. Like, I'm reading things and it's like they have eating disorders, poor association, poor relationships with food. I'm like, what the and when they get together, all it does is make for a melting pot or a perfect storm of people to support one another's failures, as well as eating disorders and inappropriate relationships with food. 
Yeah, and then I see this, and but people are just like they don't like no one. Ble- can, no, yeah, obviously nobody not, calls them out. Like, and the thing is, why would but, you even be proud? Yeah, to say but that? I know that because when you start going in, because I've had my battles. The reason why I don't do that anymore is because I've gone there, and then I was like, hey, what are you doing? Stop, you know, stop thinking like that. Oh, go away. We need a place to heal. We, like, oh, but oh. this is oh, this is where I'm telling you. Any, even those other communities, okay, the, 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 the dating people, whatever, they say the same thing in their conferences. Mm-hmm. That people becoming way more socially freaking awkward and clueless because they're online. People don't know how to date, ask on a date. People, and my, my whole point is, for you it's hard because you feel like almost, I'm pretty sure, that's my opinion, that you want to feel like you want to keep trucking to break through through people, but at the same time, like, is this waste of my time to truck through these people? So it's like a, always this 50-50 battle in the INFJs. of J's. At which point to cut my it's losses? Not, it's, it's, it's not, not like you're giving up no, on no, them. No, it's not so much a waste okay, of so time. Okay, so well, let's see. Let's, let's say this. It should be a different platform. And it should be different. No, and it should be a different platform for you. So let's look at this this way. Like Gary Vaynerchuk. He engages with people, he meets people, but then he has online presence, right? But he doesn't, he doesn't go in with those people. Yeah, but that's because that's but not the his other, person. Yeah, but that's no, not but his personality. I, I get it. I get it. But you have to find another platform to be able to get break through and engage with no, people. But no, but no, I do on, that. No, but you don't. Understand. No, but it I, has to be. No, 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 no. I do quality. No, no. Listen, I have the other stuff. I have the DJs. I have the sneakers. I have the fitness. No, I'm talking INFJs. But there isn't talking, anything. Exactly my point. So you can be the different platform. For INFJs. Yeah, but that's the thing. Okay, again, that's one of my problems, even with this YouTube channel. Like, there's a lot of people who, because they, they call me ISFJ, they think I'm a different personality type. Like, they don't get it. Like, because it's like, I'm not. Oh, well, we've been through that already. I'm not, constant, I'm not constantly saying, oh, INFJs do this. INFJs listen to music like this. INFJs oh, that's don't just like silly. that. Yeah, that's just silly. And everything is like, INFJs is this, 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 this. And then it's, it's like, just you silly. can be your best. You can be that. And you do that. It's just and silly. it's now becoming like this personal development thing where I'm like, I'm not trying to no, personally no, no, develop yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to give you insight. Yeah, maybe some of it may be... Pe- based on my personal experiences, but so that you can be like, oh, okay, let's, you know, do that. Like, so for example, even yeah, Dave yeah, Powell, yeah. Superpower is saying like, you cannot just say, hey, this said, he he said, you know, how many, um, you know, censor things and now, oh, he's a ISFJ or whatever. Like my thing is, <laughs> yeah, this my is thing so- is, my intuition <laughs> thing is like, no, like regardless of what people say, I know that there's something there. Somebody who's sensory dominant in a fight, they're going to be like, these are the facts, this is what happened, and they'll stick to that. Somebody who's intuitive dominant is more like, here's what's going on, I know what's going on, screw your facts, this is the pattern, the reoccurring pattern, and they'll stick to that. And like, I've been trying to figure out why, like trying to go, but the thing is, the more I go deep, I come in, come in contact with the day superpowers and all these people who are solidifying my theories. Yeah. And then so there's they, confirmation of this. Yeah, yeah, we've but, been through years of this. But then when yeah. I come across and I'm like, I don't get it. I just confirmed it with Dave. The same people are praising Dave, but yet you're not actually applying it. Yeah. So, well, but this is my whole but point. But no, hold on. But then we now we get into these conversations. Oh, well, it has to be MBTI. Related. So now you now restricted now oh, down to MBTI. That's so convenient. That's a way of oh, thinking. Why are you going there for? No, I'm going there for because that's that, that's what it is. That's what it is. Let's call things for what they are. It's a way of thinking. Always twist something so it starts fitting the narrative instead of sticking with the subject line like over here. You see what I'm saying? You it it's. It's going to be part of anyone's personality. My personality types, you know, have 
ways of doing things, whatever. But my point is, enough with this convenient, extreme way how to defer your faults. It's almost constantly becomes a space to just other people confirm. Like, um, deep in your heart, you kind of know you suck in some area or the other. You go online and then you get this place of healing, you know, snowflake situation. And then like, oh, Johnny comes in here like, yeah, don't listen to that guy. He's like too much. He's like, he thinks he knows everything. You know, it's just good the way you are. You good. Like there's nothing wrong with you. We all have days when we don't notice that our parents brought a new fridge like a month ago. Like The modern idea is you're supposed to accept yourself. I think that's an insane insane idea by the way <laughs> really I think I can't think of a more nihilistic idea than that you're already okay it's like no you're not and the reason you're not is could you could be way more than you are and so what do you want to be you want to be okay as you are or do you want to strive towards what's better and it's this confirmation of like yeah your idiocity is okay your clueliness is okay, everything's okay, but then you as a, like, um, not directly like a parent, but somebody with mature, you know, certain from experiences come in, and then these people are thrown off. They don't know what to do with something like this. Though they have no choice to say that, oh, he just knows everything. Like, they have to defer, 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 instead of, otherwise you have to look at yourself and be like, yeah, I suck, I'm an idiot. Nobody's gonna start from that standpoint. You know what I mean? So it's it's very difficult place to be when you're trying to kind of... All right, so you were starting to say that you had a feeling that I was going to bail on this. Why is that? Since you know it so well. <laughs> because it, you always have to go through the process with you. You cannot just go in and dismiss it right away. You have to go through your emotions, right? You have to go through your research. You have to go through your engagement. You have to write these paragraphs and more paragraphs of answers to other people, you know, and then you have to go, you do all this research, you confirm, 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 and then it solidifies something within you even more. You technically know more you technically confirmed more of the things you felt or had a hunch that they true. But do you think it's like a cognitive bias where I'm only like looking for answers that I already know? Or that no, I not that you only know. Technically, you don't even know. You just feel. So you have to solidify the feeling with the logical point of view. So sometimes you just feel something. Oh, it's not right. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to dismiss it. I'm gonna engage, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask, 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 ask. No, no, I'm saying, but it's for you to think that I ask only people who align with my, or do you think I actually do a, a But But how they can align if they offer, remember those cases when there was a point of view, but because you have a point of view, you're not putting it out there, you search for it, and then you find all these people saying exactly freaking the same thing. So what are the odds? I, I think people dwell. I think dwelling is the wrong strategy. It's focusing on the wrong things, right? You gotta focus Let me on tell you want. who's willing to listen to you com to complain. The people that are willing to listen to you complain and dwell consistently only look two parts. They're your most inner family and they love you to the ends of the earth or their fellow loser friends. <laughs> So does, does that mean you came up with something yeah. or there's the truth that just simply exists and now it hits you in the face and you can't deny it? So my thing is from, from your personality standpoint, when you are involved and you give your all and then it's not coming your way and you know, and, and I will, from my personal perspective, like I am on a pessimistic side, not optimistic, yeah, like you're on the optimistic side, I'm a pessimistic side. So from my pessimistic side, I already know, that's why you don't see me freaking online engaging. Do you? I dropped that ball a long time ago. Like, literally a long time ago. I literally don't engage. I'm literally even thinking, like, screw Facebook, screw all of them. Like, literally screw them, because it's all a bunch of, becomes like, <sighs> junk. It's just junk, junk, and now I have to scroll junk, and I, I have noticed I'm wasting my time of scrolling through other people's junk, and I'm like, at one point, you just have to kind of, like, exit you know, to see things clear. So 
I, I kind of already knew that those people not gonna be receptive, those people not gonna be enlightened, those people not gonna do a research, those people not gonna, not gonna, not gonna, not gonna. I just knew it because those are the kind. So when I knew you as a personality come in and you have to deal with that, you have to go through your emotions and everything, but once you hit the wall, you know you have arrived. But yeah, but is it the wall? Because I don't want to feel like I'm like better than them. No, it's, it's, not, it's nothing to be better because you go into other points. Like technically you get into INFJ community. Why? Not to school other people, but to learn. Mm -hmm. You actually had questions thinking that this is one of the spaces I can enter and get answers and I have none. I get none. All I get is a bunch of people complaining and don't understanding why they have a brand new fridge a month ago and they haven't noticed it. Like, it's silly. It's stupid. It's, it's, it's not smart. It's not productive. The basic, the biggest picture is it's not productive. Nobody's life got better. Nobody cared to ask questions to make their lives better. Technically, somebody who goes and says they haven't noticed there's been a brand new fridge for a month in the house says that, in my opinion, almost like a cry for help because, like, I noticed myself that this is not good. But on top of that, just to make sure that other people confirm that I'm still good, like I'm not like total lost cause. I'm just gonna put that out there so all these people can confirm, yeah, you're not the only one. Plenty of us are like that out there. So it's, where's the progress? Where's it telling him like, yeah, buddy, you sh why, uh, how, you know, how, why? It sh this shouldn't be a norm. Why creating this new norm, you know? And I think when somebody like you comes in and not getting any answers and all they get is this silliness, I'm not, I'm not saying at all you coming in thinking you're better or whatever. Originally, you came in to actually find answers for you. But I did find answers, and I for think you. people do find answers, though. So my point is, in that case, do you want to keep trucking? No, no, that's the thing. Like I do, I think people find answers, but after, like I said before, once you start finding answers, especially with us, because we use our NI, we internalize all of this stuff. We gather, we gather, we gather, we gather. So now I become more intelligent based on the information that I receive. That's the key to social intelligence. It's massive social references and pattern recognition. You go out and you interact with thousands upon thousands of people. You're gathering more social experiences than most people would in their entire fucking lives. And then you start getting a feel for what's appropriate and when, and that's a fucking skill set that more and more people are lacking. So now I can apply it during different because of my... Oh, I just literally hit me in the head from previous conversations we had. Remember we had conversations of like, we are, let's say, in a group of people and brand new group, we never met this person or that person. And then like you start a conversation with them and it's a freaking awesome conversation, like loved it, you know? But I got everything I could possibly can out of you so there's no need for us to meet again. Mm -hmm. Is this one of those cases just on a different scale? Is it one of those cases, I came here, I'm look, looking, 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 looking. I found everything I needed. You got nothing for me anymore. Thank you. We don't need to see each other no more tomorrow. Yeah, but that's the, it's the, dif the difference is that when I'm at those parties, I know those people are going to be okay because we live on good terms. Mm. But on the back of my mind, I know that if I leave, I'm still leaving these people in this. Like for me, it's like if I come to a place, I need to come to a place better than I left it. But, but I feel, uh, you know what I'm saying to you? <coughs> and the thing is, is that, again, this is our personalities. It's not about helping the world. Hold on, hold on. It's not about helping the world. But we have this thing where we just want to help. That's our thing. So things like I'm, it's not about helping the world, but it's it, within your community, yeah, yeah. whatever niche you have, you want to make a difference because you go there because you want to align. So even if I am not INFJ, forget about the fact that I'm not an INFJ. The fact that it hurts that INFJs are where they are now, based on what I've read. Okay, I'm not an INFJ, mm -hmm. but I read about intuition. I read about you know, extroverted feeling, and I've read about extroverted sensing. So if you have the intuition, if you have the feeling, if you have the sensing, 
you should be way out there. There should be more people doing guiding, better. Yeah. doing better, providing this information. So where are these people providing this information? I think there's bigger. I think there's bigger fish to fry, to use an old saying. And when I look at Jimi Hendrix and I look at John Lennon, they never settled. They never were okay with the version that other people were giving them. In fact, they tend to shirk that off and move on to the other thing quite quickly. A restless soul should look and say, "Ah, oh, this this doesn't this doesn't seem right." And then the real critic comes out, which we can follow because there's an authenticity and integrity in what they're saying. I think to, to refer back to the young man's question, I mean, that's the point. I'm more interested in the integrity of the message, and if it kills me or it kills the band, I don't give a shit. You know, I want to live, of course. You know, I'd rather retire on an island. But as long as I'm in, in it, I'm going to report for what I see. And if it means a smaller audience, then that's what it means. But a man has to be able to lay his head on his pillow and know he's telling the truth. And I've at least tried to tell some form of the truth in a system that doesn't want truth tellers. Look at the people that get rewarded by the system that exists. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, I'll just what, ask you one existential rhetorical question. How many truth tellers exist at the highest levels of media in America right now? And how many people, because they're cussing out some other person, that's considered truth? That's not truth. Truth is going after the system. And, and being willing to risk their place in the system to tell the truth about the system. So. Yes, sir. So when I ask when those people, where are those people, um, when I ask where are those people providing this guidance, it's like I'm met with nothing. And I'm actually, you know, challenged myself. Like people, you know, like they'll go away from that point you know, and like, it's like, you don't care? Like, it doesn't bother you? Like, it doesn't bother you the fact that you have people online who come in, who make posts, who say, I don't relate to this whole INFJ martyr thing. Like, I don't feel like I need to help everyone. I don't think I'm whatever. Like, I'm not whatever. So, and you have other people, okay? On one, on one hand, it's good. But on the other hand, if you think about it, it's like... Oh yeah, I feel the same way. I'm not that way, I'm not that way, I'm not that way. But there's no one actually explaining, like I do. Hey, you may be because there are three different INFJs and a fourth one, which is a floater. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying to you? The, 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 the academic one, okay, mm -hmm. that's all they do. They break everything down, they read books, they're, they, everything, they live on paper from cognitive functions, everything. Mm -hmm. Then you have the spiritual types, the more prophetic types. They're the ones who, you know, enjoy, you know, the mysticism and all that stuff, right? They go on spiritual retreats. Mm -hmm. They come back. They're different people, right? Mm -hmm. They're into the goth. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. Then you have the floaters. The floaters are people who are just like, you know... I'm in, I'm always looking for myself, I'm always searching for myself, I, I don't know where I'm coming or going, but mm -hmm. I'm just going through life. Like, they don't, even though they have NI and FE and all that stuff, but it's, they're not really making an mm -hmm. impact because they're just going through life. Mm -hmm. But then you have someone like me, who, I'm not academic, I'm not spiritual, mm -hmm. I'm the one who really goes, and because I want to experience stuff, not because I'm a thrill seeker, mm -hmm. but because I want to learn, I want to know why. So I may end up by default, putting myself in these situations. Mm -hmm. But because I put myself in these situations, just something that says, oh, well, I know this, so I might as well get involved in that. I've already done this, so therefore I've already, I can go, because I know how to work this system, I know how to work these individuals, so if I get involved in this, yeah, it's not gonna- Yeah, you're very tactical. Um, but that's what makes you even more socially intelligent. Yeah, and then so now because so you have physical interaction. So, so now with you as an ESTP, you I know exactly. Even though sometimes you know you're like, oh, I don't want to admit it because that's how you can be. I know exactly when you're off, and it's to the point where I'm like, babe, we can't go driving like right now because like I totally feel your energy. Like I just it's really bothering me. That's why sometimes like when I'm like, bro, like don't get in the car like this because I feel it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes. When we have an argument, whatever like that, you know I'm the first person to say I'm sorry because again, I feel that as well. Like I feel your pain, I understand where you're coming from, I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh man, what did I do or what did I say? And I get very, so the same way that I can be extreme in this, I can be extreme in the way that I'm like, you know, same thing with 
when I yell, you know, at, at you know at our daughter or whatever like that, I can be whatever and then, you know, come back and be like, okay, I'm sorry, you know, just very. So again, it's like, so I, I, I say these things and it's like people don't realize that I'm I'm saying this stuff like like Gary says he's like I'm su he's surprised to have how everyone would rather read a book than to watch what he's doing. So if I'm telling you I've done this, like the way to get to where I am is to continue exposing yourself, but in your area. So if you're an academic, keep exposing yourself to the academic whatever. She's, so basically, yeah, he's just teaching how to people, because in today's world, you need to start um, studying off of, like, the physical streets. Because, I, I oh, that's, that's why he thinks about how Asians approach, because they've hit them with the books. Yeah. You don't learn in the books. You can always find a book to read up on it. But it's not in the books, it's in the streets. Yeah. And that's what he said. He said he learned so much in, 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 in Boston, in Mount Ida College, where it was really, it was in the ghetto. He said he learned so much, and that's why he can yeah. connect with these people. Yeah. Because he gets them. He, he understands. He understands. Oh, that, and that's why there's so many schools, you know, that the alternative schools that are coming out there right now. They are all about hands-on learnings. They, they don't even deal with... But anyway... Yeah, so, that's off subject. So let's go back to this whole thing of like, again, like... Because I think what I'm going to do... I'm just going to just... Yeah. All the videos that I've had, just put them out and then just, just leave. Because I think what happened is that it's not good for me. It's I'm being, not getting healthy. Yeah. Because it's, I'm, con I'm consuming my... I'm consuming all of this stuff. I'm becoming too consumed. It's taking too much of some of my time. I'm doing this stuff at work. And it's not becoming productive. You know? That, that's a good reason to kind of... Because part of INFJs, you have to understand too, is you can become obsessive a little bit. Just pushing too hard. So you need to reel back in. And the thing, is, the thing also is that I think also there's a difference too. MBTI is very... Um, Subjective. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Anglo Westernized. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't know, when I say Anglo Westernized, you don't have to necessarily be white. But, like, let's say, like, you're in DC, there's very Anglo Westernized culture. Mm -hmm. You know, like, everyone. <laughs> oh, come on. Baby. <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm saying, but it's like, but no, no, no. But everyone, but if you think about They're it. You're going to get triggered if I said. No, no, no. But think about it. Like, you don't see too many black folks. Yeah. You know, like, no, 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 no. Yeah. But urbanized black folks yeah, no, who are into no. MBTI. And uh, people would be amazed that those folks actually got the street smarts. They actually probably, they actually probably, or make an assumption, like the, 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 the feeling I have, that they're probably way better at reading people's body languages. They're no, way better but at. Remember my friend? The, my, yeah. my, my Puerto yeah. Rican friend? The one who's he's my uh, well, he was my supervisor before, mm -hmm. but I learned a lot through him mm -hmm. because he was able to. He was more of the diplomat. I'm more of like the you know. But he was able to. Like, I would say, hey, what do you think about this? And he would actually sit there. And he was like, yeah, I get it. I totally get where you're coming from. Here's why. Here's this. Here's that. And I would say, ah, you have to have and, that social intention. And uh, and then, and then, I'm, and, and then, but then he would actually, yeah, this is why. And then after that, he would say, yeah, but you're good. I got you because you're a smart guy. So he would actually make me feel good that I actually understood. Like he really connected with me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but I know he's not an INFJ though mm -hmm. because he has other things that it's just whatever. But then when I go online, I'm like, why can't I get that? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying to you? Because, street, because Johnny, streets are on the streets. No, because here's <laughs> the thing. No, but listen, because here's the thing. Like, so I would go to him and be like, all right, he's feeling that. He's And he would be like, yeah, you're smart. Like, you got it. Because he started realizing. Even my supervisors, mm -hmm. they would be like, hey, you you, you got reading people. 
Like, you know, because I would explain to them like the way that they're doing certain things is yeah, affecting. Yeah, people like uh, I have people come to me. Yeah, my my subordinates who are not even part of my my division, they'll say I never thought people I never thought somebody would listen. Remember, we went to the to the we went to uh, it was the park for, for, for the little league, mm. and one of the guys came up to me and he was like, "Hey, you talking to me?" He was like, "Hey, I never thought anyone would listen." He's actually going for, for psychiatric therapy now because mm. of all the stuff that's happening between work and all that stuff. So I sit there and I actually listen and I give him advice and I was like, "You know what? We're gonna create a meeting. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that." And it's like, I mean, even though they don't follow up, mm-hmm. but still, they just need someone who can actually listen. Who can not always always give advice, but be able to provide perspective. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying to you? But I find a lot of people online, especially the TI, the very technical, the logical people, what they do, they rationalize behavior. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing that happens with like self-help seminar junkies, right? They feel high because of a program, but they didn't actually gain a skill set. They didn't actually gain anything tangible and lasting, and then they have to keep coming back and coming back, and there's no real growth, right? They've learned how to not be a beginner, but none of the material out there is teaching them anything beyond that. And in fact, the very material that's teaching them how to not be a beginner is actually opposite the material they need to learn to get to advanced. And so it's fundamentally almost impossible for them to get where they want to be. So when you rationalize, you don't give the the people the tools to actually improve. You just rationalize behavior and it makes it you Come, put it in a book format. Yeah, yeah, no, but and it also makes it seem as if like it's okay to feel this way. Yeah. Like yeah, I get. Here's why you get you feel this way and it's but okay. It's, but it's not you, really actually giving the person the tools because guess what? And that's what the 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 pickup artist said. Mm-hmm. He says I've been doing this for a long time. He's like, now pickup artistry is changing mm-hmm. because now it's becoming personal development, but only to the point where it's like this where I'm gonna give you the woo woo basic information mm-hmm. but it's only gonna give you the hit because then you're gonna come back yeah. for more. more I'm not gonna give you the yeah, yeah, yeah. but the, it, right now it's happening everywhere give only this much free and then you're like oh you know the same thing like um, when I went to uh, tactical training right so it's like a self-defense for females class but it's free they give you just enough, then you feel like, oh man, ah, yeah, I should come up, and which is fine. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, when you put that approach somewhere else, mm-hmm. especially in like messing with people's lives and feelings and how to deal with social aspects of things, that's now is jacking people up. You got people have to be careful putting their opinions out there sometimes because I think with the online right now too, too much is start becoming harmful, not helpful. And that's why I think a lot of people follow Peterson a lot because he will tell you and he has everything to defend every single sentence he says. He defends with so much proof you can't deny it. But that's the thing. But it's, it's to the point now where people are actually following him and they're binging off of his stuff, but they're not actually doing, doing it. Any tools. Doing something about it will take other people's help. If I'm not feeling well, I'm going to shrink at physically dealing with somebody one-on-one. I'm watching how to do Taekwondo. I can practice in my house all I want to truly understand Taekwondo. I have to be in a classroom. At the end of the day, everybody will understand to do something about, like maybe INFJ freaking things are better done in live, face-to-face. Just like freaking uh, AA meetings. They done live face-to-face. They're not done live behind a computer. At the end of the day, well, no. maybe that's where we're coming down to. We're coming down to too much clueliness, too much confusion, too much drowning other people's nuts because of all these faces hiding behind computers. Maybe all these things better serve live, face to face, and not in a and not in a format of like me talking, you listening. In a format of like break it down, break it down. 